What is up, Juventus fans? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back. Uh, today, what we're talking about is we're going into uh, the situation with Manuel Locatelli. Why is he a player that Juventus needs and why is he a player that Juventus is looking at currently? Um, you can see the man beside beside me <laughs> when we're talking about it today. I like those kind of mistakes. Anyway, um, so what we're doing here is a special new show that we're trying out. At least it's a it's a temporary one right here one, right now until... Yep. He can maybe be shooting on his own. Uh, but what we have right now is what we're going to call Coach's Corner. So stick with us and yes. we'll fill you in now. <laughs> Ciao, Ragazzi. Welcome back. You're in the Beyond Canary Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today is August 10th, 2021. It is a Tuesday. Um, so what we have is a little bit different than what we usually do here. Usually you see me in the mornings doing the news shows and all that's going on. A little bit hectic, uh, hectic day for all of us going on right now. Yep. But what we're doing is we're bringing you a special segment. Uh, hopefully it'll be a regular segment going forward. Maybe we can do it a little bit differently. Um, right now what we're doing is more of a scout's view, but it's going to be Coach's yeah. Corner. <laughs> and uh, that is why I have with me. Yes, there we go. I ain't the right one. This time, yeah, this time today is, uh, with yeah. me is uh, Julian Ginotti. You know him from our lives, Beyond Canary Zone Live. Um, if you haven't seen those, go check them out right now. Um, but he will be diving in and talking about Manuel Locatelli, why he is a um, an asset to Juventus, why Juventus wants this player, and why this deal needs to get done for the club. Um before we do anything, let me go ahead and say hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon also to stay notified for all of our latest videos and all the content that we can bring to you regularly every day. Um, the more you like, the more you subscribe, the more that we can bring to you, um, you know, the more options exactly. we're going to have going forward. Um, what I will say also is uh, I've been trying to make this a habit every single day to say it, and you all have started to pick this up and do it. Uh, if you're new here, if you're newly subscribed, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know who you are, where you're from, how you became a Juventus fan. That's one of my passions when it comes to this project that we're doing here with the Beyond Canary Zone. Anyway, with me, like I said, uh, with me today is Julian Ginotti. He is a coach. Uh, give us a little bit of background of what you do um, You know, when it comes to uh, if you're – if you're here in North America, a lot of people call it soccer. If, yeah. you, if that bothers you, it's going to bother you. But I don't think it bothers Julian yeah. here. Uh, but people will say he's a soccer coach or a football coach, whatever have you. Um, so tell me what you do, um, what's your passion behind it, and then we'll, we'll jump into this going forward. So I graduated uh, from university. I went to school in Cleveland uh, at Notre Dame College. And as soon as I stopped playing collegiate soccer – I, I came back home to Canada and I linked up with a an academy, uh, a football academy, and it's called Burlington Force. I'm going to I'm going to plug it in. <laughs> hey, feel free. That's what we do. here. Yeah. So I first started with the younger ages I, I was with an eight year old team. And then I start to, pro to progress and keep progressing in my licenses on in Ontario, especially. And I was grandfathered in my NSCAA uh, license so that comes from the u.s uh because i played the four years of collegiate soccer um and i've just been progressing ever since and now i coach a 10 year old team at the moment and i'm an assistant coach for the 15 year olds and we have different philosophies for both clubs or sorry not clubs for both teams yeah um my with my 10 year olds i like to play fast i like to play quick and, and in triangles but in the 15 year old team we like to play we like to play relax and then go forward on a counterattack three five two. Um, it's not my preferred formation, but that's what the beauty of soccer, right? You always have different ideas and how successful you can be with those ideas, and it depends on the players you have. So mm -hmm. I'm full. I'm really open to anything in terms of ideas and coaching in particular. Um, I am not open to a four four two. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you covered you that know, before. I, yeah, if you've watched the channel and watched the lives before, I that's the one thing I'm not open to. It doesn't present any opportunities of success and progression of, and flow of fo uh, football. It's literally kick, dump, and chase. And yep. that's <laughs> one thing I do not like. So that's a little bit of background on me for my coaching, mm -hmm. my philosophy. Um, I, we're going to get into the Locatelli uh, and what he'll bring to Juventus in particular. Um, Justin, is is that good? Are we good to go? Yeah, we're good. What I really wanted, yeah, that's what I wanted to just give people a little bit of background of who you yeah. are, why you're what I call our expert here when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, again, me, I'm a fan like most people, but you have more experience actually coaching at a higher level 
than most people, yep. you know, that I really know, or, you know, that maybe we even have as, as fans that are watching, uh, that are even just fans that are watching this. Um, so basically, let's just jump into it and let's talk about what yep. Manuel Locatelli brings to Juventus, why it's so important. The one thing I will say, and let me talk real quick and then I'll give it back to you. Yep. Um, you go, man. <laughs> the one thing we know when it comes to Juventus is that Juventus needs to improve their midfield. Seriously. We've known this, honestly, for the yeah. last year and a half, two years at least. Um, we've had aging members. We've had injured members going in and out. We've had all these issues piling up. We have overpaid um, people that probably shouldn't have been um, signed on to the contracts that they've been getting or most definitely shouldn't have been given. Um, looking at you, Ramsey, <laughs> looking at, looking at <laughs> players. You have uh, Rabio, who's shown some improvement over time. who's become stable. But then you also just you just need um, a you need a younger player. You need somebody who can bring um, creativity, uh, some different stuff that we're just missing. You see, if you're a Cristiano Ronaldo fan, you see him struggling and you see the frustration in his face that he doesn't have somebody out there creating for him. Um, I said something that was positive for you guys and not saying that Ronaldo did anything poorly. Leave a like for that right now. Um, anyway, <laughs> then uh, let's just jump into it. So tell me, what does Manuel Locatelli bring to the club and why do you think... He is such a uh, a key for the future moving forward. Well, firstly, like you said, he's a future and present player. He'll he'll be um, his player profile. He's 23 years old. He he's young. He's Italian, and he fits the bill. Um, he's exactly what we need. He instantly upgrades our midfield. He will play in a register role mainly under Allegri. He will play. He might play as a Mitzala, but we'll see because that totally depends on if he if we get Pjanic or Arthur starts to play in that role. It's totally up to Allegri, but I see him more as a starting regista and a 4-3-3. And that's the holding midfielder underneath the two more advanced midfielders. So that's the ideal role I see him in. Now, again, he is 23. He has international experience now. He has top level club experience at Milan not not a lot of experience but he did play at Milan and he did have some success there um there was a reason why he was loaned out and sold eventually to Sassuolo to gain experience to to grow into what he's become which is didn't they buy over him sorry didn't they buy over him like instead of giving him a chance to develop I'm sorry That's not interject on your part. No, no, no. But I just, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, they they bought Lucas Bilia, who is an aging player from Lazio, and then then work out. And sometimes you just gotta let the kids play. But at times, like when you're like Milan, you you need to have some instant success. And they they let Sa- uh, Locatelli go to Sassuolo's gain, and now to Juventus's gain because we're on the verge of signing him. So he's a player. He's industrious. We need him on the ball as much as possible more so than any other midfield that we have. Because like you said, Ramsey, wow. Um, Rabio, <laughs> he's starting to grow into his, his position and his role on the team. So, And Bentoncourt, if he plays higher, I mentioned this on the lives before, it allows him more space and more freedom um, and less responsibility on the ball in our own half. You need responsible players to take the ball from defenders. Uh, our, like from our, We need the transition from defense to attack. And Locatelli is very responsible and and has the the tools to unlock defenses. Something that Benton Core clearly clearly doesn't have in his toolkit, and we saw that last year. Um, so, it, optically, it's the right move. Italian, like I said, twenty three years old, young, fits the bill. The new transition of players that we're bringing in, like Kulisevsky, Dalit, Benton Core still young, Arthur's young, uh, Chiesa. It fits the bill. It, it, we're moving. We're transitioning as a club right now. Go ahead, Justin. Something that excites me when it comes to a player like Manuel Locatelli is, and when I say this, and again, I, I'm a shill when it comes to Italian players, but like, <laughs> there's something that you can get from. I am excited about the opportunity of linking him and Chiesa up together. Oh yeah, like I feel like he can create for Chiesa. Chiesa, Chiesa is hustling all over the field, left and right, doing everything. He's just he, he's. I don't want to use bulldog. He's there for everybody, but he literally is. So, um, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? What I'm trying to describe Kiesa, um, he has an engine that never stops. Yes, that that is perfect. Yes, that, exactly. He literally does not stop running. Um, he's all over the place. It's not it's not meaningless running. It's meaningful. Yeah. He's doing something. He is creating while also you're going to have this creator, you know, developing place for him where he can yep. score. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited the opportunity of having two Italian red players 
that love Juventus and that, you know, you see the reason we're even talking today about Manuel Locatelli becoming a Juventus player is because he said, I want Juventus and nobody else. Get the hell exactly. out of here with any of the other offers, which to me, that makes me love this kid even more to see oh, somebody yeah. committed to this. Um, so what does it say when, uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of my point when I'm saying that about the Italians and you know, the, what yep. the future for Juventus, like I said, you look, you look at duos. If you're thinking about for the long future, not that, you know, my duo was the Del Piano Buffon, but I think about like those, those Italian players, there's a bunch of others that were sprinkled in there, but those are the top two that stick out with me. Could Chiesa and Locatelli be that going in the future? Who knows? Um, we'll see. Yeah, I'm not hopefully. gonna, I'm not, right. not gonna, yeah, I don't want to hype him too much and just be let down, but yeah. I feel like he can be solid, play, be a solid player. Um, what else do you want to jump into right now? Do you want to jump into the stats, the statistics when it comes to the player, or do yeah, you still have some more you want to go over first before we dive into that? No, we, we pretty much went over the, the basis of why he'd fit in and why we actually want him. Um, the money makes sense, one, stylistically, two. Upgrade in midfield three, and like I said, he, him and Chiesa are going to be the foundation of the Ital Juve in the future. They're both 23 years old. They're going to grow into their primes at the club. Hopefully, I'm going to knock on wood because that's what I do. <laughs> but uh, it's exciting. It's exciting once he finally arrives. Um, and now we're. Just, I, I I've picked and chosen some pictures or mm-hmm. photographs that I'm going to go over to further exemplify why. I, yeah. I think Locatelli fits the bill and why Juventus needs him drastically. <laughs> um, and the first graphic, it's going to be, it's just going to be a, a stat chart. And I'm not going to go over all these numbers because it, <laughs> obviously it's ridiculous if we go all, over all of them. I, I just want to point out, firstly, that if you're obviously closer to the 99 percentile, that's mm-hmm. very good. <laughs> and through his passing and pass types in these charts, you can see that there's a lot of green and that's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, the one... One in particular I want to go through is the progressive uh, passes. And if you want to go, we, we want to look at that one. That one is right at the bottom of the passing. So on the left side here, yes. we can see progressive passes, 7.58 and the 98 percentile. Yeah. And what's classified as a progressive pass, I've mentioned it on the show before, obviously. Um, it's a pass that's in the neutral or attacking third that travels 10 yards towards the goal. So we we keep on ripping Arthur, Benton Coor, and Rabio for passing the ball backwards or sideways, and the ball never goes forward. Th- like this, these analytics show that Locatelli does like he's 98 percentile for a reason. These are the top five leagues in the in the world or in Europe, mm-hmm. sorry. So obviously he's one of the best. Um and he does seven and a half per game. Per game. Yeah. I don't think Arthur Benton Coor Rabio do seven and a half combined. No, not so <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah. one guy can bring this into your into your club, and it instantly unlocks our lethal attackers. Who's like, look who we have attacking. We have Chiesa, we have Ronaldo, Kulusevski, Dybala. I'm not going to say Morata's a uh, threatening attacker, but he still can score goals. So if, if a guy like Locatelli gets on the ball here um, at our club. There's so much potential to unlock different areas of the pitch where Chiesa can attack in dangerous areas. Ronaldo can attack in dangerous areas quicker, faster, not build up the play. Arthur makes 17 passes sideways and gets the ball, does it again. It's not going to be like that anymore if Locatelli comes when he comes. Um, yes. It's going to be nice, f- fast flowing football. At Sassuolo, we saw instances of that, and I'll show you those later on, but we're still going to look at this chart for a bit. Um, yeah. Another stat I want to go over is the passes in the final third. I'm trying to find that. So it's fifth, fourth from the bottom there on the left-hand side. Mm-hmm. So that's at 8.79 passes into the final third. And he's, again, he's in the 98 percentile. Yeah. So that's insane. That's, yeah, yeah. So th- that's no longer, that's no longer in the neutral third anymore. Like this is him as a holding midfielder in the final third. So mm-hmm. that's like 30, 30 yards towards goal, 35, 40 in that range towards goal so he's passing the ball into the box probably on the ground into someone's feet and he's finding gaps between defenses and again we don't have a player like this Mm -hmm. it's it's uh, what do i want to say here it's imperative that we get this kind of player yeah and to me this is your statistical proof is in that line right there that he is a creative mid 
And that's why yes. if you if I wanted somebody who me is maybe more of a I would say a soccer dummy when it comes to or football. Sorry, guys. Uh, whatever it comes <laughs> to, you know, actually talking about like the analytics, the little details like this. I'm not a coach. Like I said I played it at a kid's level, not at like a serious yeah. level. But as a fan, I watch it. This is what I mean. This showed you that and the 98th percentile that per 90 is what 8.79 passes into the yeah. final, final third. That's huge. That's something that we have not had. Um, he's getting he's getting that two other guys to create. Like yep. for the for his you know for his team you can look at Boga and other players and you've seen the yep. way that they have benefited off of his creativity with yeah let's let, yeah let's think about Sassuolo for a second a, a club mm-hmm. that a club that's not known like they're they're usually a bottom feeder they they were eighth place this year and they gave every top team a run for their money um, like Locatelli made Boga like I said look and like you said sorry look very good he made Raspadori make. The, the Italian national team and he won a Euro Cup. <laughs> like Raspadori. Yep. Like I like the kid, but like there's a reason why he made it and it's because he's p- playing with a guy like Locatelli. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to show example. Like we, we can take a look at these numbers all day and you see the green and whatnot yeah. and we can go into this all day, but the two main statistics were the progressive passes and the final or balls in the final third. It's because just- again, yeah, sorry, go ahead. It's, no, I was just to say, it's the statistics that, sorry, I was going yeah. to trip over my own tongue in that uh, <laughs> sense. Uh, it's the statistics that everybody cares about because that's what we yeah. want. We want a creative mid. We see the struggle that everybody's, uh, not everybody, we see, I, I don't want to go back to the Ronaldo face. We see we see the struggle yeah. face. We see that. We see, uh, yeah. you know, just the way that people have been let down. We also need strikers that are actually going to you know capitalize off of this wingers that can do it yes he is somebody who can do it um but when you have somebody you actually have a reliable mid that can create for you and move the ball that's constantly trying to move the ball the opposite direction not back toward the you know the yep, defense definitely. so anyway um do you want to jump in with this uh this next part um do yeah, yeah. Now, so breakdown? we're gonna we're gonna show some graphics now illustrating more to the point of what we were talking about um yeah. His his passing in general and his vision. So I I we have Locatelli on the ball here in the middle of the screen at the bottom, and we're showing his vision in this uh, little graphic, and we see that that's Jeremy Boga out there on the left. Um, his vision and his uh is just his long balls, his ping. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. It's right on the money, and they they have a chance to score a goal. Imagine. So we have, let's say those two other Sassuolo players are, let's say, Ronaldo and Dybala or Chiesa. Or not, sorry, not Chiesa. Ronaldo, Dybala, or Morata. Mm-hmm. That dude out there on the left is Chiesa. You, you do a ping point pass right to his, Chiesa's foot in that much space, he's probably scoring. Yep. Absolutely. Like, if, yeah. He's going to he's gonna get in range, at least. Yeah. He's going to be there. And this, um, and this further, sorry, this further exemplifies Locatelli's movement in, in games as well because he's a central midfielder and he's ending up on the left or on the right hand side here mm-hmm. on a four on four four on five so we we know he understands the game we can see that he'll make that pass no problem and it'll create a chance easy well and it's just like when i was looking through and like i said not a <laughs> professional by any means obviously i'm far from it but when it comes to looking at like last year uh, for last season, I did the uh, player ratings, and you're going through those statistics, and you, you brought up long balls and bringing yep. and bringing in accurate long balls. Like I, now that he wasn't leading the team, but the one reliable one was Leonardo Benucci. It's the yep. one guy that I relied on every time that he's going to drop it on a dime to his yep. target. While everybody else, like, I, I, good I, luck. Yeah, good <laughs> luck. Maybe, maybe, I mean, not maybe, but you could throw in like Quadrado in there. He could probably do yeah. that, but like. I mean, his are more for, you know, crosses into the box, uh, you know, for a header or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's to me, that's a big thing that we've been missing. Um, do you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, we, we still... can move on to the next one here. Okay, let's let um, us. Here's our beautiful faces again. So yeah, you see us. Check us out. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to just, yeah, just yeah, uh, so, you know, lull you to sleep with just one photo. But yeah, yeah. there we go. So here, here's a great example of a, a progressive pass. Um, mm-hmm. Same game, too, funny enough. Um, I forget who the opponent was, but that doesn't really matter at this point. Is it um, Fiorentina? So, no, right, anyway. I have no idea. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we see we see Sassuolo man popping up into a, a good spot behind the lines, and we see four defenders in the middle here, where the ref is. We have three in the one lo- like in a little triangle, and the one near Locatelli. Mm-hmm. So Locatelli has the ability to split four defenders 
and put a uh, player on the half turn driving at defenders in the in the uh, what will be the final third yeah and with one pass he eliminates four opposing players Yep. And the best pass in the game of soccer is the one that eliminates most players because obviously that means there's less players to dribble against or attack against. <laughs> yeah. So this is a perfect example of why Locatelli is needed because would Benton Kerr make that pass or would he look backwards first? Would yeah. Arthur make that pass or would he swing it out wide to this right back here? We, well, he, like From previous experiences, we know he's going to pass to the yellow boots at the bottom of their screen here. Yeah, so Bentinker can't even make a back pass anyway. He's gonna get yeah. intercepted. That's what we know. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah. that's this is just another example of uh, a, a nice progressive pass um, that Locatelli has in his toolkit. Um, to me, if we move this on. Was, oh, sorry. Go yeah. Oh no, I was gonna say it's like I don't you know like I said the reason we have it, it's it's for Julian what he's saying here. And I just I love taking it in just hearing any kind of any sport whatever you hear hearing a coach perspective is so different than a fan perspective. And I enjoy hearing your uh, in depth analysis when it comes to that. Um, yeah. but to me, this was just it, to me this was the peak picture when you just when you could see his delivery between those four guys like you said yeah. eliminating them and then you know how, just that's the biggest assist he can make to the uh, to the attack is really oh, just sure. rid of those guys not just delivering where it is for him to move forward um sorry to be honest like yeah. looking at this a second time that i think that's mm-hmm. berardi is yeah actually it that looks, looks like, like a two and he has like the little beard there i think yep. that's berardi and yep. now instead of passing to berardi he's gonna be passing to ronaldo or dabala right <laughs> and we're putting he's gonna be putting those kind of players in, the, in that position so let let's think about that and let's be excited I mean, I thought everybody was telling me Barati's attacker, uh, an oh. attacker that we need. <laughs> I'm not oh even going to get God. into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and then we got this last little round. You're going to have to let me know because they're two. It's a two parter. So let me know when to flip the. It's a two parter of the. No, uh, no, right? we got one more, and then we're going to go to the Italian one. So we got one more single one with Napoli. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Sorry, that's I okay. All good. Missed out on that one. Did I? Let's see. That was. Okay. Yes, this is the, yeah. This is, so this is against Napoli here, and from I you can't really tell, but at the bottom or the top right of the screen, he's right near the edge of his own area, and in this position, he's still splitting four defenders, or he's eliminating four defenders, and to have I'm going to say to have the balls to do that in your own half and yeah. you're on top of your own edge of the area when there's a press coming along or a high press at least. Um, it, it's it's really it relieves the pressure. Mm-hmm. It relieves the pressure from your team because you're trying to build out the back, and one pass is getting rid of almost half the op- opposition team. Yeah. So when you do that, you relieve pressure. Chiellini, Bonucci, or Dele, whoever they, we can push up and relax, and then we're we're going on a break here, or at least we're going we're atta- we're in attack mode at least. The problem with what you're doing here is should this deal fall through. I'm going to be so upset now. Like I'm salivating over here for a player in the midfield that can actually do this, especially looking at what we've had and just knowing like what he can bring to this club. Like I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the signature to be done. I mean, we've, we've all been ready at this point, Um, but yeah, definitely to get a a creative med like that. Somebody who can, you know, um, pick apart the, you know, pick apart the other team like that would be, would be massive. Um, any other comments you want to make on this one before I move on to the next one? Or Yeah, just, just one more comment. Yeah, so yeah. In, th- in this situation, he'll be picking the ball up more um, from the defense in this kind of area. And that's what Allegri wants. If Locatelli was to come and play in the register role, he'll mm-hmm. be picking the ball up a little bit deeper than usual, which is still fine because he can rip through passes that splits defenders. Yeah. Um, it, you'll just see it in a deeper sense. So if he was allowed the opportunity to become a Matsala, you'd see the pictures or you'd see more results in the previous two pictures. Yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah. So that's all I wanted to make sure that we understand where we are on the field. No, that makes sense. Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let me, while I'm pulling this up here, like I said, live producing, still making sure I have everything right. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. I'm still getting used to this, this uh, equipment yeah. guys, but appreciate y'all tuning in and appreciate Julian for really breaking this down for you guys, uh, for you all that are interested, who maybe like me aren't as knowledgeable when it comes to what he brings as a player in position going forward. Yep. Um, let's wrap, bring it up here to what we have for the Italian national team. And this is against Turkey, I believe in the first match. Um, and that led yep. to a score. Um, yep. 
by Juventus player. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, former, let's, uh, former. Former, that's true, that's true. Um, in flux. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you take over here. Let me know what is happening in the situation. Yeah, so this is a two-parter. Um, this is the first part of the the, the, the play. Um, so we're strugg- Italy is struggling against Turkey in the first, not struggling, but they're struggling to score a goal and create massive chances. So mm-hmm. what Locatelli can bring to the table here, um, sorry, first I'd like to preface, Locatelli is playing on the left-hand side in a 4-3-3. He's not playing in a register role. He's playing on the left hand side as yeah, more was of Sala. It? it was a four three three, not a four four two. Yeah, correct. That's right. Okay. Four three okay. three. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Okay. Four four two is dead. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so Locatelli picks up the ball. Um, you see Chalhanic Lou beside him. You see uh, I forget what number five's name is. He's a chunkier fella, mm-hmm. and number six, who is another not very good uh, Turkish midfielder. I was expecting a lot from them, but it never happened. Anyways, yeah. so we see his heads up the whole time. We see Locatelli's head up. He has control of the ball. He this is what makes him pretty good because he can he ha, he's comfortable enough on the ball to pick his head up and find his next target. So if we go on to the next phase, we see the four Turkish guys there. Yes, it's uh pull up that one up here. There we go. So now we've seen Locatelli on the left, top left hand side of our screen, and he's he's split. I'll, I'll give him three this time. And we, he's found Barella who's the advanced midfielder, who's on the opposite side of the pitch almost, like on the right-hand side of mid- center midfield. And he's and he's found Brella in acres of space. Mm-hmm. And again, we see his ability to break down three midfielders with one pass. Yep. Kudos to Barella for getting to that spot. But more kudos to Locatelli using his weaker left foot to mm-hmm. split three defenders and put Barella into an attacking position with his front foot going mm-hmm. to goal. <clears throat> So at the end of this play, obviously Barella picks up the ball. He passes out wide to Berardi, and Berardi crosses it low onto the ground, or sorry, mid drift of the Demiral, and it's one nothing Italy. And the floodgates open, and Italy's up and running. Yeah, next thing you know, they're so, winning three. Or yeah, it, three. yeah, and they win the game three nothing. Locatelli scores two goals in the next game. Um, it it basically unlocked Italy's tournament. They felt good about themselves. I'm not saying he's the sole reason why they felt good, no. <laughs> but he, yeah. he's a main contributor at the beginning of the tournament when they were going roughshod over these teams in the group he, stage. He was. This was the moment when I was like, "Crap, this is going to be even more expensive." It's still expensive, yep. but I thought this one might get in the 50 million euro, euro range because I thought that he was going to keep playing. Um, yeah, dude. Thank Those you, first Bob, two games. Bobby Mancini. Thank you for yeah. holding him for deciding not to, because who knows what he could have done. I'm not saying that he was a better option than Verratti, but I think he's a lot closer than maybe some people would suggest. Oh, for was. sure, for sure, for sure. Like those first two games, he he's he's the best player on the park. Both games. Well, it, another thing that could be before I uh, go off of this picture I was to say is one thing that could be said for is yes, you got to give a lot of credit to Barella for that run that he made, but also. Yeah. It just speaks to what Juventus would be getting for a player like this that could set up attackers like Chiesa, Ronaldo, or whoever exactly. have you to run you're, unabated yep. because you're taking those guys out of the picture. You don't have you're to worry about 100% it. Hundred percent right. <laughs> yeah, that is why I have you on here. That's what I wanted to hear. It's just you know just confirmation that I'm hundred percent right. Yeah. That's why we do this. <laughs> no, um, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, do you have any other comments before we wrap this thing up? Uh, we actually went a little bit longer than we were, what we were expecting to, but yeah. that's what we do here. We try to bring you the best content we can, and Julian definitely did that today. Um, with oh, thank you very talking much. About this. So I appreciate you um, doing this. Hopefully, the coach's corner can be something you know going yeah. forward for this channel. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a closing thought. So, to culminate everything, mm-hmm. the the price we don't know the exact price yet. Um, I, I'm sure. It's going to be in the 35 to 40 million euro range at the, the conclusion of the deal, wherever it's loan to your loan, blah, 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 whatever. It's a good price to pay. He's 23 years old. He fits. He's an urgent need that what we need. And it, it just makes a lot of sense. Get the deal done. You see what he can do at a club stage and in a Serie A stage. And you can see what he can do on the international stage. And it's not that much when you could see other figures for other players. Yeah. And that's my final thoughts. I mean, you see so many like these premier league or yeah, premier league teams is spending outrageous amounts, uh, you know, for players that are lesser that I would say are lesser than yeah. Manuel Locatelli, like spending, like I said, 70, 
70 million euros on who was it was it the ben white one was that the one that keeps coming back to me or who was the it? arsenal no, center back yeah is that what it was or yeah it was like this, 55 mil or something so okay, there's something else that yeah. i saw that was like 70 or 80 that everybody was like are you kidding me and then juventus can't even pay not, not that they can't we're not going to go into <clears> the <throat> negative stuff we're just talking yeah. about this is the player that juventus while well, you heard it from the horse's mouth he or over here he's basically <laughs> saying if juventus doesn't get this done we riot uh yep. <laughs> that's, that's I mean. basically it. <laughs> yeah right uh we will just like uh just like in uh, uh, you know uh, January sixth, we will insurrect at Contenasa yeah. <laughs> if this doesn't happen. I'm kidding. Uh, this wasn't a threat, guys. We love you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, that'll do it all for this edition of the Coach's Corner. Thank you very much, Julian, for joining me today and talking about this. We really appreciate all of your insight. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Justin, Definitely. for hosting. Definitely, and hopefully, it's a lot have- easier. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, hopefully we'll have a lot more of these going forward. Let us know what you thought in the comment section down below. Um, leave, leave, make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe if you're new here. Do it for Julian. He takes the time out of this, out of his day to do this for you guys. Um, he gets paid professionally to do this stuff. So the fact that he's doing this for you all uh, is a big deal. So I appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Like I said, subscribe. Make sure your notifications are turned on. Also, uh, make sure you follow Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter and Instagram. And also make sure, definitely follow this guy i uh, follow julian uh, it's a uh, julian genotti but it's genotti 151 i'll leave it down in the uh description down below on twitter as well make sure you follow me you can follow me if you want it doesn't matter follow me i, just so for, I would i would follow him it, it's not great content but <laughs> but i'll be on there I'll, you'll hear me raging or i'll you know whatever it is but make sure you follow <laughs> me at uh, justin sofer on twitter as well forza juve forza bianconeri